in this lecture we are going to do uh, uh, the summarizing of the entire course. Uh, uh, so, either you can listen to this lecture in the beginning so that you know what is coming in terms or you can basically listen to the end so that uh, you can uh, summarize what you have learnt. But uh, this uh, we will be an important lecture that is because um, we are going to uh, mention what are the what is the way forward in terms of this. I mean as we mentioned before uh, this uh, supply chains are very important and every product or service is the result of a supply chain or service chain and these are affected by extraneous factors outside of the supply chain. So, people know how to design supply chains, but in the presence of these extraneous factors that is the ecosystem where supply chain management becomes very important thing. I mean the contents of this uh, are uh, from a book authored by me and Kameshwaran uh, which is published by World Scientific which is released uh, just a week ago. So, uh, to start uh, in the next one hour we are going to look at uh, what we have learned so far. See what we said is uh, the highly connected supply chain and fragility. So, over the last couple of uh, decades uh, people have spent lot of time and effort uh, to basically design uh, highly efficient uh, supply chains and the result is we have a highly connected and fragile supply chains. So, when you have a connected and fragile then the risks travel from one place to the other and also the risks can break down can bring break down to the uh, in the supply chain. So, we will look at that and because of that there is a need to look at uh, the ecosystem because the risks come from a number of factors which uh, uh, are outside of the supply chain, but come from the governments, comes from the resources and so on. So, people have been saying that these risks are there to model and so on they list the uh, mm, uh, tens and twenties and thirties of the number of risks. But what we are going to do here in the ecosystem model is to say outside of the supply chain there are only three factors which affect the supply chain, three very highly generic factors. They are the resources, they are the governments, are the institutions and third one is the delivery mechanisms. And those are again can be subdivided the resources can be human natural and financial resources and industry resources and so on. So, and the governments can be governments and social factors it can be state governments, central governments or the local uh, city governments and so on. So, the, the issue is that the ecosystem model captures all the uh, factors that will affect the supply chain. And we are going to uh, present the that generic uh, and cosmic view of uh, a supply chain and present all these factors. And then we look at uh, the uh, GRIP framework that is the governance risk um, innovation and performance. So, the performance obviously depends not just on the supply chain, but on the delivery mechanisms on the resources if you are looking at the cost then if the resource cost increase or the human resource cost increase then there is going to be an increase in the cost. And if there is some uh, late uh, uh, in terms of uh, the customs clearance then your lead times will get this one. So, basically your performance innovation risk and governance depends on the four fact all the four factors. And we look at some applications and try and show you what green supply chain design is on conclusions. Because of the shortage of time we will not be uh, able to get into the details of the application, but I will just show you this. And you can listen to the applications in the other lectures. So, high performance supply chains efforts of stake stakeholders for the last two decades. So, they are lean, JIT. TQM, total quality management, outsourcing, collaboration, visibility, supply chain, cross docking, etcetera. You name it, you, there are several 
several of these things that have happened. And of course, you have very variety of resources like web software and then consultants and implementation experts, they have come ERP, SRP and all this software and uh, for logistics you have software like uh, transportation management systems, warehouse management systems and all that. So, all this software and interconnection of the global supply chains have made them highly connected. Now, why did you make them high con highly connected? Because you want them to be logistically connected so that your goods move from one place to the another, one city to another city, one continent to another continent uh, just in time. So, you have basically the the logistics providers who are who own ships, so who own uh, aircrafts and so on so that the the logistics is very well connected. And similarly, the internet and other uh, uh, communication devices have made it informationally connected and of course, financially. Once the finance becomes information because uh, the banks are all very well connected with the internet and the bank connections, transfer of money, LCs, letter of credits all become very easy. So, once you have all this, what is the final goal of uh, for the supply chain of all this high connectedness? The high connectedness is global supply demand matching. So, you do not want to the you do not want to miss the customer. So, you want to have the customer orders fulfilled as quickly as possible. So, the supply demand matching and of course, when I say supply demand, it is high quality products at low cost which the customer likes. But then, the supply chains also has selected as uh, risk transmitters. Efficiency contributors of the supply chain network have become risk creators. For example, outsourcing. Outsourcing has created a lot of risks like uh, uh, information uh, uh, risk, like uh, theft of intellectual property. International logistics has created piracy and other problems. Internet, of course, you have cyber security problems. Credit through LCs, if there is a financial crisis, the letter of credits become very expensive. Trade and financial flow, liberalization and all that. Now, liberalization is good when the things are good, but when there is um, uh, problems uh, of financial crisis, then liberalization becomes protectionism. So, everything can try can go, go the other way around and turn its uh, uh, face and then say instead of liberalization, I have protectionism. So, 2008 financial crisis and the decline in trade and that people thought whatever is the globalization has happened and that globalization can be deglobalization because there is a, a decline in terms of the trade that has happened. And 2011, March 11 earthquake and tsunami, nuclear crisis and plant shutdowns in Japan threatened supplies of semiconductors to all parts, car, car, uh, to car parts on to all parts of the globe. So, basically when the tsunami has happened, I mean Japan has been a contributor to most of the industries and that has created a lot of uh, uh, problems in this due to the high connectivity of the global supply chain. They, they react to just in time to the events such as collapse and demand. For some reason that happens in the United States, financial crisis or some disaster, then if there is a collapse in the, de in the demand, then that will just in time cancel the orders in China. And that will uh, make the logistics providers have no work. So, this connect high connectivity has given uh, the possibility of higher risk. And the recent um, uh, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis and so on, they have created a lot of problems for uh, the people. And Japan earthquake has uh, 210 billion dollars loss to Australia floods has 7 billion and so on. So, well, anything that happens anywhere in the world has an effect on your supply chain. 
So, if you look at uh, the 2008 uh, great collapse, if you look at 2008 quarter 3 to 2009 quarter 4, there is synchronized collapse in the global trade. You can look at all the countries, both the export and uh, import has, has come down. So, the global trade has, has collapsed twice as much as the global GDP. But people, why, why this has happened? Global trade has collapsed. That's because of the supply chains and their instant transmissions of the risk. Globalization highly connected supply chain amplified and transmitted market collapse across the globe. And also, governments turned protectionist, the resources became very expensive and high concentration clusters became very vulnerable, very vulnerable. If you have all the electronic clusters in Japan, then when there is an earthquake in Japan, then uh, they, they, everything gets affected and all the supplies of electronic co components to car parts, they, they don't, they, so the production in other parts of the world stops. So, organize, organizations extremely used to the supply chain, like the governments, traders, energy, social, political factors influence the performance. So, what we are used to in the supply chain literature is to study the effect of your supplier, the supplier's cost, lead times and so on and the quality. But Although people are aware of the risks that face social, social, government and other resource risks and so on, they have not taken into account while designing the supply chain. They have not taken these factors into account while analyzing the supply chain. So that's what we are going to do, what or we have done in, the, in these lectures and that is what we are going to present. So, that is what we call supply chain ecosystem model. So, the ecosystem model is a framework to visualize all operational strategic management and execution issues of the supply chain. So, it is not just strategic issues, it is not just planning, it is operational management and execution. It also gives you the governance uh, of uh, the supply chain. How do you govern? What is the mode of governance that is best suited for your supply chain? What are the risks it faces? What are the innovations that are possible and so on? So, let us look at the, uh, what does the ecosystem consists of? I mean, if you, a if you have a definition that is borrowed or uh, uh, closely matching the biological ecosystems. So, ecosystems comprising of a network of companies, countries, their governments, social and political organizations, natural industrial clusters, financial and human resources and delivery infrastructure including logistics, IT, connections and knowledge of the industrial environment. Interacting together with the landscape and climate and the climate here is the economic and industrial climate and the landscape is the vertical landscape. The vertical is either it is healthcare or it is uh, it is food or it is auto, it is electronic and so on. So, there could be there could be uh, 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 interactions between across verticals, but for this purpose to keep things simple, we will talk of a vertical of a supply chain and their interactions on the vertical of this. So, for us the ecosystem is basically that consists of all these factors. So, let us look at the diagram of the ecosystem. You have the supply chain ecosystem, you have the supply chains which is of course, consists of from suppliers to uh, the manufacturers to the retailers and the finally the consumers and you have the resources and these resources are the human natural financial resources and industry clusters and others like educational institutions, R&D organizations and all that. The institutions are the governments and social factors. 
Now, if the supply chain has say 3000 suppliers and, and they are all there in 10, 15 countries, you have to talk of 15, 20 governments and you have to talk of the resources in each of those countries. And of course, the delivery mechanisms are the ones that transfer goods and uh, the information and also the finances across the supply chain partners. So, since we are talking of global supply chain, this will be the delivery has to be international delivery. So, you have the basically this ecosystem that we consider and uh, the investment climate, these three are called the investment climate. In the World Bank and other reports, the people have talked about the investment climate of a country or a region. Now, the investment climate is basically the institutions, resources and the, the delivery and also the business friendliness of, of a particular country. If you can look at all those, then that becomes the investment climate. There are lots of reports on the investment climate of China, India and each of the states in India uh, by the World Bank and other organizations. There is also what is called a coevolution. This coevolution particularly it corresponds to the innovation. Any innovation, whether it is product or process, which is typically considered, uh, they they just cannot survive by their own. For example, if you call it the the modularization of products in the supply chain as an innovation, instead of making integral products of, of one kind, you design the product so that they are all modules. And these modular products, each of these components can be produced in one of these anywhere in the world. So, the modules are standardized, the processes are standardized and so you can outsource them. So, that takes it to low cost resources and when you outsource other countries come into picture and you have the countries coming into picture that is instead of they have to liberalize their economies. And of course, when you are transferring goods, you should have good infrastructure. So, what happens modularization leads to outsourcing, outsourcing leads to uh, it can happen only if there is liberalization and liberalization says that there should be logistics providers. So, you have a tremendous growth of the logistics providers UPS, DHS, DHL and others in the across the world and they wanted to give uh, a single single entry uh, this one uh, logistics for the across the global this one so you have you have coevolution of this since uh, this is a modularization has been successful in electronics it moved to apparel it moves to somewhat into apple apro uh, auto and so on and that is what is happens with the coevolution and there is also risk propagation financial crisis financial crisis it makes the supply chain demand very expensive. That is because you cannot get loans. Once you cannot get loans, the loans become expensive, then the demand drops. Once the demand drops, the, all the orders are cancelled. And also, the, the financial com companies also give LCs to this one letter of credits. They become expensive. So, the businesses get affected. So, this means there is a demand drop means there is a drop in the in the demand for the logistic services. When all this is happening, the countries become protectionist. So, you can find that the financial crisis has created the trade collapse. So, you can explain the trade collapse using this diagram and that is what the ecosystem is. Ecosystem explains both the globalization as well as the uh, risk propagation and so on. But in our case, the investment climate depends on the vertical. In the World Bank case, investment climate is for a region or, or a country irrespective of the vertical. So, but it is important to note that investment climate for a particular vertical is more important. So, you have the supply chain, delivery services mechanisms, resources and institutions for this. So, if you want to map this ecosystem, you have suppliers, manufacturers, distributions and retailers as the value chain or supply chain 
and you have all these institutions which are the governments, customs, export and other government regulators, quality control, social, financial and trade issues which are connected with this. And of course, the resources which are infrastructure, foreign institution investors, ports, airports and roads and industry clusters, human financial natural resources, labor unions. And you have logistics IT companies, transport, trail, road, infrastructure, logistics parks and so on. So, you can see if you want, if you want a business to survive, you require all this. You want uh, the, the trucks for uh, B2B and B2C transportation or it's for reverse logistics and you want of course the resources for manufacturing. You want the education institutions to train people. You want of course the governments to allow foreign investment into the country or foreign investors coming into the country either to establish manufacturing or or to or, or for for service industries and so on. So this supply chain ecosystem aptly models all the logistics, all the uh, global supply chain. So if you look at one by one, what are the natural resources? The resources resources include natural, human, financial resources and industry resources like clusters, special economic zones. And they also include knowledge, intellectual property, relationship with stakeholders and infrastructure. Now one view of the firm is the what are the resources that a firm needs and they could be all the all the inputs and outputs and so on. But there are soft skills that are needed to run the firms nowadays and their connections, connections with the government, connections across stakeholders. If you want something, the stakeholder listens to you and he respects your order because there is so, so much of competition, it becomes it becomes a very difficult to get attract, att attract the attention of your stakeholders. So if you want to do this, you have to have connection and good relationships and also things are changing so very fast and there are disruptive technologies all around. So you have to be careful about the intellectual property and the knowledge about when about industry vertical, what is happening, what are the those things. Well, there are institutions and the supply chains or governments control the inter-country entry and exit through the ports and airports affecting lead times and inventory. So important parameters uh, for the companies to register superior performance or hard and soft infrastructure such as trade facilitation because when you are crossing crossing the, uh, the ports, you need not have to spend more time. Uh, regulations and deregulations, privatization, customs, uh, free trade agreements, foreign direct investment restrictions and, and on entrance of the foreign companies. Of course, you have business friendliness, enabling attitude and economic diplomacy of the governments. You see, ultimately any business that is coming into the, it creates value through economic development. It creates jobs for people. It gives you the people, the products that they need. So there are social factors and such as global unions, industry associations and others and also talent creation. You need talent to, to run this. Talent is both hard and soft skills knowledge of the subject in which they want, they have to work and also the soft skills is which is the relationship with other employees, relationship with other companies and so on. So delivery infrastructure tra can transform economies. The internet wireless sensor networks facilitates greater visibility uh, to into and control the shipments through improved track and trace capabilities and real time coordination. So the sensor networks have become very important and several innovations in transportation systems from commercial jet aircraft to container shipping, Suez and Panama canals to trade facilitation. So there are several innovations. The innovations need not have to be always product and, and processes. They can be services like transportation system. Containerization is the biggest innovation of recent times. And Suez and Panama canals is another 
uh, big innovation that we are having. So, innovations can be either in terms of resources or it can be uh, in the institutions, government deregulations or it can be in terms of products, processes and so on. In world class supply chains, the movement of components, final products, information funds are not discrete functions, but are governed by a single integrated process with the goal of tight management of deliveries, inventories and costs. So, you should understand although we are showing them as four different aspects, they are not separate, they are tightly integrated and the governance mechanism or the organization structure which you are going to design has to take into account all your resources, all your supply chain factors, all your government relations and also the delivery infrastructure. So, that is the, the basic uh, ecosystem that, uh, that we have uh, so far formulated. So, the ecosystem is has four elements apart from the supply chain which is one arm of the ecosystem. The other three arms are resources, the institutions and the delivery mechanisms. These three we have seen that they, they affect the supply chain a lot. Now, one thing one should understand is that the global supply chain or in the, the, uh, the all the companies or independent companies, it is an inter organizational network, any supply chain is an inter organizational network. You have a China, a supplier in China and a OEM in USA, I mean the, the, they have a relationship all right, but the, the OEM does not have any control on the supplier. If the terms are good, they both interact, if the terms are bad, then they do not. So, the inter organizational network where companies are independent entities and they are bound together by some factor and that is the market factors and the governance of that, the performance of that, the what are the innovations are possible and what are the risks it faces are important issues. That is what we are going to look at in the next few slides. But suffice it to say that the ecosystem framework, you can map the ecosystem for auto, you can map this for food, you can map it for telecom, you can map it for, uh, for any of the logistics or any of these services. It would be good exercise if you are working for some company, it will be very good exercise to map the ecosystem for that company. If you want some examples, you can refer to the book or the previous lectures. Yes. So, there, this the grip framework as we call governance, risk, innovation and performance. Now, when we consider this, we will kind of, we'll go in the reverse order. So, international chains, lead time and cost. If you look at the performance means lead time and cost. Freight causes several countries making supply chains long and fragile. Lead times are dependent on resources, the clusters. If you have good clusters, they are close by, then the lead time is less. If the clusters and if you, your fellow supply faulty components and they have to be inspected, then the long lead times are long. Infrastructure, customs clearance, logistics and IT providers and their business models. And the pre-tax costs are dependent on tariffs, transport costs, energy costs and foreign exchange fluctuations. Now, the post-tax net income depends on transfer prices, income taxes, rules in various countries. Well, most companies file their income tax returns in their where the country is headquartered. It all depends on how, what is the kind of relationship that countries have if you are, if you are uh, sourcing from, uh, from a country, uh, from another country, supplier from another country, then uh, what is the kind of relationship both these countries have. So, 
the cost and let us look at uh, the uh, enablers of this. So, if you look at uh, for example, uh, the uh, the supply chain global supply chain. If you look at the product and value chain or the supply chain is modular products as I told that the products are not integral products they are not designed as a single one like a sculpture, but it is a parts of modules and they are screwed up to form the, uh, the total part. And they, you have just in time total quality management, supplier relations management and uh, supply chain visibility collaboration these are all the factors that, that have taken into account. Once you implement all this, you have ERP, SRP and other packages which are basically integrating all your supply chains. Then you have some kind of web services which will this, then you have an integrated supply chain. So, the enablers for a supply chain are these are the factors. The fact that they are modular so that they can be outsourced and then they can be integrated later. And also in case of repair, the, the module that is spoiled can be thrown out and you have to replace only the module not the entire product. And logistics of course, when your, when your uh, product is traveling across continents and it is visiting lot of ships, uh, a lot of ships and lot of ports, then connectivity port road and IT infrastructure 3 PLs software vendors become very important. So, if they are all good then your, your logistics is good. Trade policies, free trade agreements, customs, foreign exchange, stability, patent, legal system, trade facilitation, these are all the trade policies that under come under the institutions. And resource management, natural financial resources, clusters, water, power, if they are available and cheap then that is good. Now, if you have all this or enablers for a general uh, supply chain ecosystem, then the lead time this leads to lead time is low, all these things are low. So, you have a basically as the your product is traveling across continents, it goes off smoothly without any problems and you have both hard and soft infrastructure which will carry through the, the, the product across continents. And similarly, if you look at uh, the cost of this, high product design cost and low production cost because the high product design cost comes because of modularization and otherwise low transportation invasion costs, low tariffs, low factor costs. So, the cost is going to be low. Similarly, you can interpret the quality and flexibility and so on. So, what does this diagram show? This shows that in global supply chains if you want to get a good lead time, low lead times then you have to have consider it has as it goes through all the countries you have to map its journey through all the countries. And when you are visiting a country be aware of the connectivity, be aware of its travel policies, be aware of the resources that it has. So, if you want your lead time to be low then in all the countries you are visiting or you have business with you have to have very good investment climate. So, if you look at the transaction costs in this, so you have the supply chain costs, you have of course, the delivery costs, shipping, inventory, asset specific, hard and soft infrastructure. Sometimes the infrastructure may be dependent on the product of that uh, you have this one. And then you have resources, asset specific clusters that means, if you have electronic business then you have electronic clusters, uh, if you have uh, uh, the shipping business you have the ship, ship building clusters and so on. And of course, institutions which taxes, tariffs, SEGs and FTAs and social groups and also the coordination costs because there is a lot of coordination that is needed when the product moves end to end. Uh, so, somebody need to coordinate and there are several thousands of players in, involved in all this. So, if you are looking at the performance of the global supply chain, you can see where you are moving. You are moving from just taking the cost of your product 
to you have the product uh, the, the product of the cost plus the transportation and other costs you have resource costs you have taxes and so on so that's what it is a global supply chain and of course, you should not leave out the coordination costs because somebody has to orchestrate the movement of the goods across the board. So, it would be interesting if you can map a product which is going through three or four countries and at each port you can you can take a lead time uh, and so on as random variables and also the costs and other factors and you can basically model it as a queuing network or something and then see what happens. So, you have lots of innovations. When we say innovation, basically we talk of products which are nano, video games, cell phones, search engines, iPod and so on. We talk of services like email, e-retail, Facebook and so on. We talk of new technology solutions like for example, the water, power and other gas and other networks. They were basically designed years ago, decades ago. And at that time, new technologies, IT, and were not available. So you want to use those technologies to make these networks smart. And new business models like containerization, outsourcing, BPOs, FD, foreign direct investment, cell direct, e-retail, ATMs, clouds, and so on. There are several of these new business models which have come. They are all innovations. And also, you have industry clusters special economic zones in China, freight corridors, new universities, they have all come up and new delivery infrastructures, digital delivery, containerization, Suez, Panam canals. So, you have government regulations, process patent, product patent, deregulation of telecom and airlines, VAT, green, free trade agreements and other things. So, if you look at what are the kinds of innovations that will affect your supply chain, any of these innovations. For example, if you make a regulation on green, saying that you want to have fuel efficient cars, then you have to make lot of innovations in your this one to meet that regulation. And what are the kinds of supply chain risks? There are lots of supply chain risks. There is that come from the product as well as the uh, uh, the supply chain <coughs> and the risks that come from the institutions because there are lots of regulators. They can say the environment should be clean and green. So, what does that mean for your company? You have to figure it out and they put a carbon uh, limit on your carbon GHG gases that your company can emit. So, you have to find out how to reduce these gases or involve in carbon trading. So, there are several of these things and then they may say import duties, import export duties, they are all decreased, increased and so on. There are several changes that happen every day and also resource related risk, the infrastructure deficit and the talent shortage and there is supposing labor, labor unrest that happens and raw materials price increases which is happening now. These are all the resource related risks, oil price increases and so on. But of course, the delivery infrastructure that is either there is the failure of the, the failure of the IT infrastructure or the logistics infrastructure, uh, there is an accident of the truck to anything like uh, uh, that the natural disasters leading to inability to coordinate operations and so on and also piracy. Somali pirates are creating uh, problems in the, uh, uh, in the Suez Canal. So, you have, you have all these problems that are uh, this one, these are all the risks. Well, once you have this risk, how do you mitigate this risk? Is it possible to eliminate all these risks? It is not possible. How do you mitigate these kind of risks? So, if you cannot mitigate them, how do you absorb them? Or uh, what is the kind of risk policy that you have? So, there are companies which will take risks as operational procedures. In other words, a risk happens, a truck, this one, 
you are prepared for it you, you you know what to do you have a decision support system which tells you whether you should send another truck you or uh, you know you send another repairman to repair it depending on the on the situation there so supply chain handling there are supply chain risk officers which are basically being appointed now but if you treat the supply chain risk as an operational problem and leave it to the operational people who are knowledgeable about the operation of the of the system then probably that would be the best strategy because if a supply chain officer is a fresh guy and he comes in and he has to take the help of the operational guys in any way so supply chain risk management is a is a big issue and of course the governance if you governance of vertically integrated uh, enterprises is well known most of the uh, early early uh, uh, risers of the in industries were vertically integrated like for general motors and so on there is a president vice president and so on so the the president has the highest authority and his word listened to but in a global supply chain you have independent companies nobody is the boss it's only the market the mechanisms that keeps them together so in which case what are the kinds of governing structures that you do who tells the partners what to do and when and how and what is the kind of technologies you should use and what is the quality control measures so all those issues require attention and that's the governance so you have the governance the supply chain is an inter organizational network and nowadays a separate chain is formed for each order that is partner selection there are three steps of in the supply chain governance one is partner selection second is coordination and third one is the control partner selection is based on structural features or in other words you are going to select your partners if you are a OEM you are going to select first year sub suppliers for all your auto parts now you may select the tier 2 tier 3 suppliers with the cooperation of tier 1 suppliers or independently but you are going to select the suppliers and that could be on structural features or relational ties so structural features are asset specificity and capabilities and relational ties are government social organizations cluster management etc and coordination is determining who does what and when and communicating to everyone and execution is monitoring the status so that processes work as per plan and control any exceptional events so the governance has these three functions so if you look at the governance here you have uh, all these players here you have to select these partners for your this one for a particular order in other words if you have order in the united states and uh, uh, you want to supply it by say september 1st for the fall uh, this one then how are you going to choose so that you can supply it by september 1st and of course you have the partner once you selected them you have the coordination telling people what to do and when and how much and at the end you have an execution team where which says that whatever you have is a coordination you have told everybody how to were sure that it is going to work on time so if there is any mishap that happens then how do you take care of it so mathematical models for design of governance mechanisms uh, and a partner selection problem can be formulated as a fuzzy hp or a mixed integer programming problem one can rank order the suppliers for each component based on the ecosystem parameters on tc in other words you have the transaction cost economics model if you have all the data then you can find out the tce of all the suppliers in all countries have an excel sheet and you can select the one that has the minimum cost 
and coordination scheduling problem can be solved as optimization problems. Who does what and when? It depends on your demand and you can depending on the capacity constraints that each of these operators have, you can you can solve the scheduling problem. And of course, expert systems, decision support systems, case based reasoning and hybrid control systems are useful for exception management and execution. So, you can actually mathematicize these things and then use the mathematical analysis for the governance models. Okay. So, what we have done is we have mapped the ecosystem and we said what we could do with it. We could do the performance, you can use queuing theory, you can use uh, Petri nets or whatever and map the corresponding uh, queuing network diagrams and then find out what are the lead times and what are the, all the uh, inventories at each of the nodes and so on. Whatever you have been doing for conventional manufacturing systems, you could do it for uh, these systems. And also, you can also study the influence of port uh, delays. You can see the influence of uh, uh, the truck failures on your system. That is the performance you could do. You could know all the innovations, the de deregulation or you have some uh, innovations that are coming in terms of technology. How does it affect your supply chain? How are you going to change your, uh, your entire procedures, your manufacturing components? So, if you, you look at just the all the elements of this, once you map them, you could do performance analysis. Now, you can use all this to design the supply chain, redesign the supply chain. So how do you redesign the supply chain? Basically, what is the purpose of the redesign? The purpose of the redesign is to find out what is wrong with this existing this one. And then how do you incorporate the risk factors? How do you incorporate new innovations that are possible? How do you improve the performance of the of the entire end to end supply chain? And what are the kind of governance structures? So, if you to do all this, then you have a new design. Now, the difference between earlier designs and this is in earlier you are just considering only the, the factors such as the lead time of the supply chain. Now, you are taking the entire ecosystem into consideration. Let us look at some examples of this one. One thing that happens here is what is called STEM models. You know, science, technology, engineering, regulations and management, they are all required in the design here. Usually, people talk of STEM models, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. But regulations and management, they become highly important in global supply chains. So, as far as global supply chains are concerned, one has to talk about the STEM models. And also, one thing that you could do using the uh, uh, these models is to find out what is wrong with, with your supply chain. For example, you take the food supply chain. What is the food supply chain? It is from farmer to the consumer of your uh, uh, the food products or vegetables or fruits or whatever. If you look at that, India has lots of resources. 50 percent of the land is cultivable, 15 seasons here. You can produce anything that uh, is possible in anywhere in the world in India. Nature is very kind, but the resource management is, is bad. The supply chain has too many intermediaries and they are no processing, food processing and this. There is no information technology used. The logistics and cold chain is bad and you have lot of trial uh, duties, custom duties and uh, uh, acts which prohibit interactions between the farmers and the big retailers and so on. So, what happens is all the others you know. Now, if you want to improve the food supply chain, or you want to compare the food supply chain in two countries, you could do that. But if you want to improve the food supply chain, you could do that by just looking at this diagram. Where do you have to improve? 
we want to deregulate the the food supply chain we want to improve the logistics or improve the use of it, it in the this one or you want to improve the uh, the process food processing industry so you have all the answers so basically you could do green supply chain design and all that so uh, uh, that's what happened now in if you want to look at this particular uh, 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 the SES framework, it it holistically models all the factors that interact with the supply chain. That is the institutions, that uh, the formal informal regulatory setups, the resources which are inputs, and the delivery service mechanisms which includes logistics, IT and influence that influence the flow of goods. So, in, a, in any supply chain there are three flows, the goods, information and finance. So, how are they influenced? They are influenced by all these four, three factors that. So, you are dealing with all those and you have a framework for that. And this framework provides opportunities for analyzing and improving the governance and performance of the global supply chain by appropriate redesign. And of course, in the book as well as in the lectures, you have we have a design of green supply chains. We have design of uh, uh, supplier selection and so on. We have redesign of uh, the food supply chains, and we have several case studies why things won't function and so on. So it is very important that uh, in this lecture we have summarized all the importance of the, all the factors of the supply chain ecosystem so that you will be very well motivated to, to study further the, uh, the book as well as listen to the other lectures. Thank you.